Hi, first grade. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different than what we've done before. I'm going to read you a story, but you are just listening. There are no pictures. So you're really working on your listening skills. Then after I read the story, you are going to complete a writing project and I'll explain to you what that is going to look like. The story that I am going to read you today is called The Three Wishes. Long ago in a forest far away, a woodcutter lived with his wife. Each morning, the woodcutter went into the forest to cut wood to sell for money. He did not make a lot of money this way, however, and he and his wife were very poor. One day, the woodcutter went into the woods to chop down a large oak tree. He hurried eagerly through the forest to get to the tree as it was very large and would provide a great deal of wood to sell. So eagerly kind of means that he went really quick. He really wanted to go fast. So he didn't waste a lot of time. Soon he reached the tree and prepared to cut it down. As he lifted his ax, however, a family of chipmunks scampered away from the tree in fear. Scampered means they ran away really fast. Next, the woodcutter saw a slippery snake slither out of a hole under the tree. Then he spotted a beautiful bird abandoning its nest on a branch above his head. As the animals tried to escape, a deep voice rumbled from inside the tree. Please do not cut me down, said the voice. I'm an old tree. The forest animals need me. Without me, they will have no home. The woodcutter stood in front of the tree astonished, meaning he was shocked, he was surprised. Very well, he said, scratching his head. Thank you, kind man, said the tree. To show how grateful I am, I will grant your next three wishes. The woodcutter was so shocked that he wandered home without cutting any wood, forgetting what the tree had said. By the time he got home, he was very hungry. He asked his wife if there, if there was any food to eat. We have nothing but a little porridge and that won't be ready for hours, she told him. Oh, how I wish I had a big fine sausage to eat right now, he said, disappointed. But no sooner had the woodcutter made his wish when a fancy sausage appeared on the table in front of him. My goodness, said the wife, where did that come from? Just then the woodcutter remembered the tree's promise and told his wife about the three wishes. You fool, she cried. There is no such thing as a talking tree, and now we have no wood to sell. I wish that sausage were stuck on your nose. In the blink of an eye, the sausage stuck to the woodcutter's nose. The woodcutter's wife tried frantically to pull the sausage off her husband's nose, but it did not work. The woodcutter realized what he must do and promptly wished for the sausage to fall off his nose. It did, and it fell right onto the big plate that sat between the woodcutter and his wife. And the two were glad, for although they had not been able to wish for lots of money or a fine house or a golden coach to ride in, at least they had a tasty sausage to eat for dinner. All right, boys and girls. Now, for your writing project, you are going to write what you would wish for if you had three wishes. And here's what it's going to look like. On lined paper. So the lined paper is the paper that looks like this, where there's not that big top part. The big top part is called the story writing paper. And that is when you usually draw a picture. For this one, it just has this small section up at the top. It does not have that big section. This is lined paper. I wrote this in marker so you could see it you are writing it in pencil. This first sentence right here is our opening. Remember the opening gives the reader an idea of what you are about or what they are about to read or what you are about to write about. Our opening says, if I had three wishes, this is what I would wish for. Now a few things, you are going to see that this first word right here, of course, needs to start with the capital. Also, anytime that you have I standing alone by itself, you make I capital like you see that I did right here. 
I also have put some commas in and it's just a pause while you read. For example, when I read this, I read it as, if I had three wishes, this is what I would wish for. I put a little pause. So make sure that you also write in the comma and then you put a period at the end of your sentence. Then we are going to use temporal words. Remember that those temporal words, first, next, then last, or we can use a word like finally, which you are going to see in a second. Those words help us with sequencing events. And we're going to sequence the order of which we would wish for things. So you are going to write first, making sure you start it with a capital F, put a comma. So there's that little pause. I would wish for, and then you are going to write something you would wish for. Then you're going to write because, and list why you would wish for that item, and then put a period. The next word you're going to use is then. We're skipping next just because there's only three. Typically when we sequence and we have four, then we'd put next. But since we're only using three, we're going to put then. So you'll put then, starting with the capital T, listing a comma, I would wish for. You'll list what you'll wish for. You don't have to draw the lines. I just drew them to show that's where you're going to fill something in because, and then you are going to notice I ran out of room. No big deal. That's why there's a backside of the paper. You'll just flip to the back and fill in why you picked that item to wish for and list a period. And then your last sentence, which is going to close out what you're writing, you're going to put finally, starting with a capital F and listing a comma, I would wish for, list what you would wish for because, and then write why you would wish for that thing, okay? And then have a, or put a period at the end. So remember, starting with your capital letters, using finger spaces, ending with a period. Anytime an I is standing alone, it is capital. Make sure, boys and girls, that you are not smushing your words together, so that's why we use finger spaces, but that you're not wasting paper either. For example, you will see that I used all, I have finger spaces between all of my words, but I used all of the lines. And the reason why we can do this is because we're putting periods. For example, if I put a period, I did put a period here, and if I were getting ready to write my next sentence, I wouldn't jump down here. I just continue it on this line because I have space, okay? Now, here's what you can do. You can post this two ways, either as a video where you show me the front for like five to 10 seconds, then flip to the back and show me the back, or you can take two separate pictures. I am going to only put up one post, but you decide which way you want to submit it. I am cool with either way. All right, first grade, I cannot wait to see what you would wish for. Remember, you are writing it in pencil. I used markers so you can see it, and I'll put this picture on class story so that you can see what your sentence starters are. All right, have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.